Hi everybody, I'm Crystal, co-owner of the Freckled Farm Soap Company, and this is Bryce and Brecken, the Freckled Farm family's kids. Uh, we thought our customers would enjoy having a behind the scenes look at the farm that fuels the Freckled Farm Soap Company. And I'm gonna do my best to give you sort of the same experience that I give people when they come out here for tours by answering some of the more, more frequently asked questions. So we're gonna start back with the books. Let's go. So we like to start our tours back at the back of the property with our bucks. This guy over here, this is Warner. Hey Warner, come here. He is our senior herd sire. He was the first male we ever got and he has sired probably half of our herd at this point. He's weighing in at about 200 pounds. We like to keep our uh, males separated from the females. That way we can control the breedings. One, who everybody is being bred to so that he's not accidentally bred to one of his daughters. Um, it also gives me a good timeline for the pregnancies. That way we can give the does supplements um, and vaccinations at specific times during their pregnancies to make sure that both baby and mom uh, are healthy. So their contribution to the, the farm, the herd, takes maybe an hour the entire year. The rest of the time they're back here in their pens. Um, usually we keep them together, uh, but this past year with this really warm winter that we've had, uh, Warner stayed in rut from July until January of this year. Um, he's a little more aggressive and because he's a larger Nubian male, um, he would throw his weight around a lot and injure potentially, or we feared he would injure his pen mates. Um, so we had the, one of our big projects this winter was building a second pen for our junior herd sire. This is Legend's pen. They're connected so they can, go ahead, lay together, they can talk and, and socialize and feel like they're together through the pen, but um, it keeps Warner from being aggressive, whether he's in rut or not. And this is Legend's pen. Legend, come here, buddy. Come here. Come here. It's hot and somebody's very reluctant to come out. This is our newest herd sire, Legend. We got him uh, summer 2019. He is far more friendly and uh, more gentle. We, so he doesn't stand up so much against Warner, uh, but we wanted him to have the ability to spend time with Warner. Uh, we built him this awesome pen with all kinds of stuff for him to roam and play. And he's very happy back here. He's a very sweet boy. People always ask me if the goats smell bad, and usually the answer is no, our goats don't smell bad, but when the boys are in rut, which um, is breeding season, uh, they do smell quite pungent because they urinate on themselves to attract the females. And nobody wants to be back here with them during that time. They usually start going into rut in July or August. Um, we breed in September so that we have February babies and they generally will go out of rut in January-ish. Sometimes it's earlier, usually, hopefully it's earlier and they stop peeing on themselves and go back to being their sweet selves. Right? Yeah. He's a good boy. So behind me is our chicken coop. We have a small flock of chickens. Brecken is our budding ornithology, ornithologist, so um, he takes care of the birds around the farm. This is Sonny, one of his laying hens. Um, we have uh, one rooster. We've had incredible luck with him. He's the sweetest rooster. His name is Elton John because this one is an enormous Elton John fan. Um, and he's fancy, so he needed a fancy name. Uh, we let the, the chickens roam uh, during the day when we're out so that we don't have to worry about predators, otherwise they're locked away in their coop. We do have one solitary duck. Her siblings 
Um, a snake got a hold of them, so she is the lone duck. Uh, she thinks she's a chicken because she was raised with the chickens. Um, she does not like water. She acts like a chicken and doesn't understand when you try to get her to act like a duck. Well, she likes mist. She likes mist. She doesn't like to swim. When you put her in a pool, she acts very offended. <laughs> um, but she hangs out with the chickens and tries to breed with our rooster. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna come to our front pasture and we have a treat that we're actually gonna go in the pasture when we do tours. We don't tend to take people into the pastures because our goats can be a little territorial um, and they don't like strangers being in their space. This is our guard llama, Afton. He just turned 14 in March. Last year he let um, a dog in the pasture and didn't do anything about it. So we added a Great Pyrenees Miles, uh, I believe that was February of 2019. He is asleep over here. He's up barking all night. So uh, he sleeps during the day and I guess they switch off their guarding responsibilities. Um, but at this point, our guard llama has been retired. Um, he gets to live out the rest of his days just grazing in the pasture. So this is our front pasture. This was the first one that we built. Um, it was great when we had, you know, four or five goats, but as we added, we needed more pasture. Um, so we purchased the property next to us and fenced part of that off so far. Uh, as you can see, they don't, um, eat the grass down the same way that sheep do. We always have people asking us if we have extra goats that we can help, you know, keep their lawns down to prevent having to, I guess, cut with a lawnmower. But goats are foragers. They like high forage. Um, they are very picky about what they eat. So they'll leave things they don't want. They won't eat the grass down very low. And realistically, you don't want them to. Um, if they're getting too close to the ground, they'll pick up parasites and we want our girls to be healthy. So we like to allow the pasture to grow up, giving them not, lots of great forage. Uh, back there were Miles, the, uh, the Great Pyrenees. That was one of our kid pastures. We like to rotate them so uh, their grass stays high and they're not eating low to the ground. This is the large pasture. We own all the woods back here. Uh, we're eventually gonna get to the point where we have fenced it all off. Um, goats love wooded pasture areas. Bryce is with Ruth right now. This is, Ruth is the queen of our herd. She has, is the mama of quite a few of the girls here. She probably weighs in at 190, 200 almost. Um, she's a big girl, she's a reluctant leader. She does not like being queen, but everybody listens to her. She's a sweet girl. She probably only has another um, two years of kiddings in her and then she will be retired and get to live out her time oh, just healthy. hanging out at the pasture. Um, when our girls are done breeding for us, they get to stay and be retired and be spoiled the same way the breeding goats do. This is uh, Patsy, one of uh, Ruth's babies. Back here with Bryce, that is uh, Bobby. That is actually Legend's daughter. When we went to purchase Legend, uh, I asked as a you know proven sire to see one of his daughters. And the, we were shown Bobby and she's so beautiful. She's the epitome of what we want our herd to look like. So I had to have her too. Um, so we got her and given her personality, she will likely be the queen that replaces Ruth. Um, she likes to be in charge. She likes to boss people around. Um, she's a sweet girl though. And she's absolutely gorgeous. She takes my breath away. Uh, Brecken is here with Ellen. That's one of his goats that he loves. She's incredibly sweet as well. We have Belle, Belle Laney, and like I said, Patsy. And these are some of the girls. Some of them are up at the barn. Two of them. Yeah, this is, this is Elsie. Um, she was one of the first babies to be born on the Freckles Farm. She is the last remaining of our very first kidding. And this right here is Cora. She was born from Patsy 
last last year so her first year being bred will be this year um, when we first fenced off this pasture it was almost entirely blackberry brambles we are plagued with blackberry brambles on this farm they grew up in every nook and cranny um, it was easily an acre and a half of brambles in fact this entire fence line was straight brambles we had to get a machete to cut out the line so that we could actually put the fence up um, it's been about six years I think at this point and this is this is what it has turned into there, there's still quite a few brambles left um, and where we will fence off eventually hopefully starting next year it's still still quite a few brambles for them to get to so I'm not sure we'll ever be be done getting all of the brambles and if it was, if they weren't thorny, we would let them stay, but they're impossible to get the, the berry from because they're very thorny bushes. And if you follow us on Instagram, this view you see quite often. This is my favorite view of the farm, especially right after farm chores when the sun is setting behind the barn. I feel incredibly lucky to get to live here. So we're gonna come back up this way. The newest addition to the Freckled Farm are our guinea fowl, right? I'm trying to push them out. Um, they're still quite young, so they're in... They don't want to come out. They're scaredy cats. Um, they're in this pen until they're a little bit older, and then they'll move into the aviary, which is a little less protected, and they'll get to roam the entire farm. We've had a really big issue with ticks over the last few years. We believe that is why we lost our herd sire last summer was a tick-borne illness. Um, and given how warm this past winter was, the ticks have been horrible. So we added a small um, flock of the guinea fowl to help keep our, the population of ticks down. And they're very close to moving out of this pen into just getting to roam the farm in general. So the structure behind me is our rabbit colony. We raise silver fox rabbits who um, have been for years an endangered breed uh, of meat rabbit. They've very recently been upgraded to, uh, to threatened, but they're in a, a very beautiful breed. Um, they're an outstanding mothers. They don't like people as much. They're not cuddly with their owners. I guess they would be if you raise them by hand a little bit more. But one of the benefits of raising them in the colony is it's a more natural um, environment for them. They can build their nests. They have lots of room to run. Um, the babies have lots of room to be with their moms. They're incredibly nurturing, wonderful mothers. And even the fathers, the bucks, um, are outstanding nurturing parents. So we allow the bucks to stay with the kids or be around the, the kids as well. Um, we have two separate colonies. Um, and two uh, breeding does in, in our little colony back here. So you can see up here this new building that's going up. This is our new soap facility. The plan was when we made this video, or realistically when we had the open house we were planning on having, um, the soap facility was going to be finished so that it could be toured, but it is not done yet. We are way behind schedule. Um, so when that is complete, we'll make another video with the tour of that. So this mess over here, um, was at one point a dog run. Um, the person who lived here before us a million years ago, um, raised dogs and that is where she kept them. Uh, it has since overgrown with blackberry brambles. It just got completely out of control and we were unable to manage it. We repaired the fence today, actually, and put um, three weathers, castrated males, in there so that they could eat down the brambles and the honeysuckle and all that stuff that they really, really love um, so that we can put a lean-to for firewood back there. Um, this large lean-to behind me is where the firewood and the hay has been stored. 
Uh, we heat our house exclusively with a wood stove uh, and it takes up quite a bit of that space and so does the hay. So we're trying to make it so that that lean-to is strictly for the hay and we'll have another one back here for the firewood for the house as soon as they get it cleared. Uh, this is our current garden. For years we had about 2,000 square feet of garden space which was enough to feed us, feed our family, um, but as the farm responsibilities grew, our ability to handle 2,000 square feet of garden space really diminished. So we are just in this small garden now, um, and it's enough to feed our family and supplement our vegetable needs. We have a, a rule in our house that the kids can eat as much as they want whenever they want as long as what they're eating comes from the garden otherwise they have set times that they're allowed to have snacks and meals so they take full advantage of the fact that they can eat whatever they want from the garden and right now they are eating from my mess of snow peas because i don't thin and i just throw it all in there and get what i can get Nice eating right there, please. So we've wrapped back around. Um, our pastures sort of run the perimeter of the property. So we're back at the big pasture. This pen over here um, was our very first kid pen, which worked great when we had two to four kids being born a year. It is not nearly enough for what we need now where we had 14 kids born this year. Um, this will be our aviary. Uh, this is where the guinea fowl will live at night. Hopefully they are not known for, you know, being very easy to manage in that way. Um, so this will be the option of where they can stay and any other animal or any other birds that we add to the farm over the next few years. We'll have uh, netting over the top of this so that they can be safe. But it is a mess in here right now. Nothing has been in here for the last few years. Uh, we have two bucks in here that I um, have identified as being good herd sires. They're, they were born this year, and so we have not castrated them. Um, hopefully somebody will purchase them for herd sire services for their own farm, and right now they're just getting this down so that it's at a manageable level for us to get in there with the mower. So we have spent the last few years trying to replace all of the landscaping on our farm to edible landscaping. When we purchased our farm in 08, um, all we had was this crab apple tree and an apricot tree, neither of which has given us edible fruit. Um, but in the years since, we have added these uh, grapes, which the goats got to like a week or two ago, so they're looking super sad. Um, they, they'll, they'll be fine next Um and this is our little orchard. We have figs and um, uh, mulberry over on the other side of the property. But over here we have persimmon, we have Asian pear, uh, peach, plum, and apple. And they're all just now kind of getting to their maturity where they're giving us fruit. Um, we really struggled staying organic and dealing with pests so we're learning every year and, and making small improvements but we haven't had a really good yield from any of them yet um, with our peaches we'll just cut away where the pests have gotten to them uh, so this is the second kid pasture that rotates with the other one um, on the other side of the pastures in general we just added this one this year this used to be the old garden um, you can kind of still see where the beds were a little bit, but this uh, this has been a great pasture this year. It has kept them really healthy and grown up really lovely. Um, it's an awesome size. We feel like this has been great for this year's kids. Um, it's a little sad to have gotten rid of the garden, but when you have, you know, the goats come first. Uh, in this pasture, we have two males who have been sold but not picked up yet this beautiful boy in the front the light colored one he is going to go live um 
at our friend's farm, the Hashem family. Uh, they have a mushroom business where they forage and sell mushrooms. Uh, Thor back here that Brecken's loving on is going to another friend's farm. He was, he's an incredible uh, buck. The moment oh, he came Lord. out, we knew he was going to be an outstanding herd sire. This is Margo. That's Margo. The rest of them are females. Most are for sale. There are two in here that were. <laughs> Most of them are for sale. There are two in here that uh, we're keeping. Margo that Bryce is loving on. And this white one, that's Luna. Luna. I hope you guys enjoyed your tour of the Freckled Farm. It was a much more abbreviated one since you weren't having to walk around everywhere. But if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments and please subscribe to our channel. We have a lot more videos coming. Uh, ones about our backstory, uh, tours of the soap facility, maybe even a soap making demonstration. And if you would like to support us and the farm, uh, the Freckled Farm, you can go to www.thefreckledfarmsoapcompany.com and purchase some of our goat milk soap, lotion and laundry detergent. And thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Bye.